good morning my dear students myself sudharani and i'm the academic head in the faculty of nursing sciences rama university kanpur and today i am going to teach you on the research and the types of the research okay so let us start with our today's topic the research so coming to the research so here i have defined the research so what do you mean by research a research is nothing but it is a systematic and scientific investigation or the enquiry so what is research research is a systematic and a scientific investigation or the enquiry for what purpose we are doing it we are doing it to solve our queries and we are doing for what purpose we are doing it to find out the answer to our particular questions or whatever the re research related questions are there so for that we are finding the answers so in this uh, definition yeah in this sentence i have used two words the one word is the systematic and the other one is the scientific so why we call research as a systematic and a scientific process or an enquiry because systematic means what it is a step by step process whenever we do any work so how we do we do it a very step by step firstly what we have to do we will start beginning then we have to again further we will start so when we go on doing step by step then our what our final result it will be there we are getting a accurate results so what we are getting we are having a good results so because of that one the research is called as a systematic process then the other word is the scientific why we call it as scientific because the result what we are getting the conclusion after what the study we are doing we are getting certain results so on that results on that conclusion on what basis they are they are based on the evidence here we are doing evidence based thing so the results which we are getting are proper results and they are based on the evidence so that's why it is called as a scientific uh, scientific okay next we are calling it as investigation so why why we are calling it is an investigation or an enquiry because investigation or enquiry means here we are finding the answers to the unknown things or we are finding the answers to those questions so that's why we are calling it as an investigation or an enquiry okay next let us take an example here so you can uh, know about this see i have written here a study to assess the knowledge and practices regarding the covid-19 infection among the rural areas so here this is our one problem so what is our problem we are we are going to assess what whether the people are either uh, people who are living in the rural areas are having the knowledge and practice regarding what they are having knowledge or practice regarding the covid-19 infection or how to whether how much knowledge they are having whether are they practicing or not so these all things will be that and finally we are giving certain answers so this assessment of knowledge and practice we are how we are doing we are going step by step how how we can go step by step first we will have to assess the um, rural area as i have said rural area people may be educated may not be educated maybe their standard of living might be high or low so based on all those things we we have to assess the things so we are going step by step so that is a systematic and scientific scientific also and the what the result we are getting that is the uh, uh, enquiry or the we are giving the final result how it is uh, being given based on the evidences because we have done the study on that one similarly in our uh, research has having many of the areas research is done in each and every field you may take pharmacology pharmacy or yeah, you may take law you may take engineering any field in every field we are having a research in the similar way we are having a nursing research also so what the nursing research is nursing research is nothing but we are, we are doing here to refine the nursing related problems or nursing related practices whatever we are facing based on that one we are doing the studies so that is the nursing research next we will see why nursing research uh, is important why what is the need of the nursing research see basically two things happen in the research whenever do we do research we will come to a uh, for the two things what we are doing either we are finding a new thing or we are replacing the old thing so what is the need of the nursing research in the nursing research in the first need is to refine or improve or discover a new knowledge again now again let us take an example of this pandemic situation only which we have now came into the existence that is the covid 19 
So before in the month of the December when the outbreak was there in the uh, China in the Wuhan city we were not aware of that one India was not having any much more infection about it then what happened the coronavirus started spreading uh, towards to all the countries then what they started to do now they start they, sta uh, they started to find out from where it came how it came what to do for that then how to prevent it what in what uh, uh, vaccine should be done for that so they are started they are started for the discovering that is how we are refining our new knowledge or we are discovering our new knowledge so that is one thing and the second thing is to update the old knowledge again again go back to our uh, nursing uh, thing only so how we are um, updating our old knowledge again take an example of a right of the patients okay when uh, the before the rights of the patient were only five now again the rights of the patient have been 11 they have uh, from five to they have become 10 in the similar way the practices of the hand washing only again go back to uh, uh, the previous uh, studies before uh, in the olden days also na, there were no any new technologies okay then slowly slowly we started to develop the technologies and we are replacing all those things so we are what we are doing the existing whatever the existing knowledge was there we are updating that old knowledge to a new knowledge for that purpose we can use the nursing research and to find out the new thing a new invention also we can do through the nursing research so i hope so you understood about the research and the need of the nursing research okay so uh, we will again uh, we will come back here and let us go for the terminologies in the research we are using certain terminologies which uh, whenever we do the research we come across many of the terminologies so we will study one by one variables or one by one uh, terminologies here so the first terminology is the data so it is always almost all you will be coming across this word data so what is data now data the data what is this the data is the unit of a knowledge or the information whatever we are collecting again go back to the same problem here to assess the knowledge and regarding the covid 19 um, infections among the rural areas so what we are collecting we are collecting the uh, data from where we are collecting the data we are collecting the data from the rural area people regarding what we are collecting we are collecting regarding the covid 19 knowledge and regarding the practice we are collecting so this is what is our data next comes the our variables so what are the variables now variables are defined as these are the qualities or the properties of a every phenomena in every phenomena there are certain properties or certain qualities so those are known as what variables okay so let us again deeply discuss what are these variables and i'll let us you give an example also so now here we are classifying the variables into two types so what are those two variables we are classified the uh, variables we are classifying here as two variables that is one is the independent variable and other one is the dependent variable see this dependent and independent variables this dependent variable and independent variable these terminologies we are specially using in experimental studies whenever we are using the experimental studies we are using this dependent and independent variables so let us take an example again let us go back to here our study also here here i am writing an example so let us take an example say that a study to yeah of structured teaching program yeah planned teaching program okay like again uh, here i will modify this study only this example only i can modify to you here a structured teaching program on knowledge and practices regarding prevention of covid-19 infection among same the rural area people and all whatever so it is so now much more not the considering with this example we will identify what are the dependent variables and what are the independent variables here two things are there one is i am telling is the independent variable so what are our independent variable independent variables are those variables which are not changing in our study here the two variables are there what are those 
टू वेरिएबल्स दोज आर द नॉलेज एंड द प्रैक्टिस दीज आर कॉल्ड एज इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल्स एंड दे आर नॉट चेंजिंग बट दे आर कॉजिंग द कॉज दे आर द कॉज ये क्या है हम दैट इज वॉट वी आर टेलिंग दैट वी आर टेलिंग दैट दीज आर द कॉज फॉर वॉट वी आर एसेसिंग हेयर सो दे आर गिविंग द कॉज इन अवर स्टडी सो दोज आर द इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल्स एंड द डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल्स वॉट आर द डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल्स दैट इज द दे आर गिविंग द चेंज हेयर आई हैव यूज अ वर्ड दैट इज द स्ट्रक्चर टीचिंग प्रोग्राम या यू कैन यूज अ हेल्थ एजुकेशन सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस स्ट्रक्चर टीचिंग प्रोग्राम या बिकॉज ऑफ दिस हेल्थ एजुकेशन वॉट इज द इफेक्ट ऑन द नॉलेज एंड द प्रैक्टिस दैट इज द डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल सो वॉट इज डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल इज गिविंग द चेंज ओके एंड इट इज कॉजिंग द इफेक्ट ऑन वॉट इट इज कॉजिंग दे आर कॉजिंग द चेंज ऑन दिस इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल एंड दे आर इफेक्टिंग द cause of the independent variable so i have told here as i uh, told you that dependent variable here it might be an education yeah it might be some structured teaching program yeah it might be some video assisted teaching program yeah it might be some planned teaching program whatever so so what they are doing because of that one what we are doing whenever you teach to the students now i am teaching you people okay when i am teaching you people you might be gaining some knowledge okay so that is what the teaching is changing your knowledge so it is affecting you the knowledge is an independent variable and my teaching is an dependent variable which you are getting affected okay next comes the research variables so what are the research variables whenever we, uh, we are doing study and all we will be finding some even research variables uh, i told you about the variables so variables where these variables are there dependent and independent variables they are specially in the experimental studies but this research variables where they come they usually they are used in the non experimental studies this we we will see in the our next uh, session whenever we are uh, defining our types of the research okay uh you will come to know about that next one more word we use is that is the extraneous variables extraneous variables means the variables which are getting affected from the outside okay from outside source again go back to the same example of this covid 19 only when i am telling that i am giving a structured teaching program to on the uh, improve for the improvisation of the practices or the knowledge of that covid 19 infection so what is happening now the people are aware so they people may see the tv also they are watching tv many are people are uh, seeing the newspapers also who are literate they can read who are even uh, illiterate also they can by seeing the tv also okay they may uh, go for the youtube also by seeing all these things they can enhance their knowledge because of that also their knowledge may also get changed because of the outside whatever they have viewed what the ad they are getting from the other medias from outside sources they are gaining they are increasing their knowledge and because of that increasing knowledge what is happening there is change in the practice so i may not say that because of my teaching only or because of my health education only there is improvisation in the knowledge and practice so they might have uh, learned yeah they might have earned from the outside also because that outside thing which they have earned the knowledge those variables are known as extraneous variables okay so next the word comes is the population so what is the population now population is nothing but the set of the individuals who are having a common qualities or a common characteristics again take an example again again we go back to this uh, same covid 19 only here we are taking the rural areas what this rural area it is one population which i am taking which rural area? again we have to specify here rural areas again let us go now we are uh, here at a mandana mandana we can say that it is a rural area so what our population what we are saying is a set of individuals they are having the common characteristics rural area people again you again bifurcate it hmm? old age new uh, adolescents young age again people to whom you are assessing male female children so again those all will go that comes in the further we can see all here so population what is this the set of the individuals who are having the same qualities and the characteristics the target population now i was telling you about the population i gave you the example of a rural area in that rural area again target population to whom i am going to assess i am now i am a researcher so i am go, uh, what i am interested to whom uh, i am interested whether i am interested in male whether i am interested in the female whether i am interested in the uh, adolescent people yeah young people whatever so so those become our target population then comes the 
accessible population. So now what is accessible population? This was the population, in the population comes the target population and in the target population comes the accessible population. What is the ex uh, accessible population means? I am doing the study, in my study who are meeting my needs? Those are known as accessible people. Again, uh, take an example. In, in the rural areas, there are Ill, uh, literate people also, illiterate people also. So, I may specify there only I will take the literate people only. Eh? Only who can read English, only who can understand Hindi. So, those people are known as the uh, accessible people. So, which are meeting the inclusion or exclusion criteria. Exclusion criteria means we are leaving them, we are excluding them. Who, the, who, which I do not want, I am excluding it, which I want, I am including it. That what I am telling is who are able to understand, who are able to read, who are able to write. Eh? So, those people are known as accessible population. Next comes the sample. See, this is the, this was the population. So, this is the population. Uh, in this population was an target population and in this target population I, I, I was in the accessible population. So, in this accessible population next comes the sample. So, what is now sample? Sample is nothing but a subset of the population. Ye, this population, in this population I am taking one part. Okay. In this one pop whole population I am taking one part that we, we call it as a sample. A subset of a population uh, which is taken from where it is taken this subset of the population this is taken from the target population where I am interested from there only I am going to take now so those people are known as samples okay next comes the hypothesis so what is hypothesis this word we, we will be coming across in our research what is hypothesis hypothesis is nothing but we are predicting something we are predicting that is there is a prediction or a we are finding the relationship between two or more variables. When there is a prediction of relationship between two or more variables, we call that as a hypothesis. So, I was here in the hypothesis, I, again I told you what is this hypothesis, hypothesis is nothing but here we are prediction, uh, prediction is done, where the prediction is done, prediction is done between the two variables, it's the prediction of the relationship, how two variables are related. I was taking again the example of, again go back to that same example, uh, that COVID-19 knowledge and practice, how knowledge is, when the knowledge is increasing, automatically the practice also increases, so how these are correlated whether whether there is a relationship between, between the knowledge or practice or that. So, that we are uh, finding it here. So, those statements are known as a hypothesis which you are uh, usually using in your research. Next, the word we are using in our research is usually the assumption. What is assumption now? As the name only says, assume. What we are assuming? What we are thinking? What we are um, the, they, they are a small statements also. They are a small, small statements that we are thinking that. I feel that Rural people might, people might be having certain, uh, they are already having knowledge and they are practicing it. So, this is my assumption which I am going to do. So, that is the assumption. Assumption is nothing but these are the statements assumed by the researcher. So, next is the reliability. So, what is reliability? Reliability is a degree. It is a degree of consistency of a instruments, degree of a consistency of instruments. Again, take an example. What do you mean by degree of consistency of an instrument? Suppose, I want to check my temperature now, I am, I, I am going to check my temperature. So, what I will do for checking the temperature, what I will use? I will take a thermometer. For that thermometer, what I will use? I, it might be some digital thermometer or mercury uh, based thermometer. So, I will take a digital thermometer and I will check my temperature. Now, I am taking my temperature. Again, after some time, again I will check my temperature. If my temperature is coming same, okay? that particular thing is said to be a reliable one. Okay. Again, you can take an example of a weighing machine also. I will go and stand, uh, stand on a weighing machine. Now, my weight will be coming 60 kg. After some time, again, I will go and again stand on the same machine only. Again, the weighing machine says it, it is 60 kg only. Again, once again, I will go and stand. Again, it is saying 60 kg only. If we are getting the same results again by continuous assessment, then that particular thing is said to be a reliable one. Okay, understood? Then there comes the validity. What is validity? Validity is the instruments used for a specific purpose. Again, go back to your uh, previous example, what I was using about the thermometer. We are using the thermometer for what? For measuring the temperature. So, that particular instrument for what purpose it is used? That is used for the measuring the 
temperature that is specifically for what purpose we are using we are using to measure the temperature similarly bp apparatus we are using to measure the bp okay weighing machine to weigh the weight only so those are the things which are made yeah which are they are prepared to use for that particular thing only so those are known as validity in our uh, research we can use here as a reliable reliability means we are one we are making a questionnaires a knowledge questionnaire we are testing it when we are testing it we are getting the same results then that particular tool is said to be a reliable tool and the, the those questionnaire which we have prepared we are prepared the questionnaire on the knowledge so those knowledge questionnaire for what purpose we are using we are going to assess those knowledge questionnaire for only to assess the knowledge only that is said to be the validity okay so again let's sum up the whole thing in a uh, few minutes so please pay attention so what is research research is nothing but it is a scientific and a systematic inquiry or the investigation why it is called systematic because it is a step by step process and why it is scientific because the results are based on the evidence and it is a new investigation why because it is a problem based then here for what purpose uh, we are doing this research we in order to solve any uh, our queries and to find out the answers to our particular questions okay we are based the research is a vast area and this research is been done in all the fields uh, that is maybe in the engineering pharmacology law everywhere we are doing the research in similarly we are in the nursing research for what purpose what is mean by nursing research in nursing research it is uh, it is nothing but it is used to define the nursing related problems so why we are using the need what is the need of the research the uh, need of the research is to refine or improve the or discover the new knowledge that is we are here through our research uh, through our uh, a uh, new inquiry or new to our investigations what we are doing we are finding the new things i was uh, i took an example of in uh, coronavirus so that is how we are coming up with the new new viruses also because of those new viruses we are going for the investigations we are identifying the vaccinations how it is coming from where it is coming to whom are susceptible so these all are coming how we came to know all this one again through the proper investigation only proper research only we are getting these things so we are improving our knowledge here and to update our old knowledge here through what part we are doing we are updating our previous knowledge how previous knowledge is updated again i took an example of a right of the patients yeah i took an example of again about the hand washing techniques you may take yeah you may again go back to certain old procedures how the old it was done and how it is been newly done before there was no any laparoscopic operations now the open operations they used to do now it has become into a laparoscopic operation again they are discovering the new things and they are updating the new knowledge again you can go about that about the right of the patient before there were only five rights now it has become the 10 rights of the patients so we are updating our knowledge so for that purpose we are uh, we are doing the research in this one we are coming across certain terminologies those terminologies let me explain you in a brief so what is data data uh, it will be always coming in your research we are we will say that we are collecting data we are collecting data so what is data data is nothing but it is a unit of a knowledge or a information which are collected from the people or the, from the population okay so variables so what are variables variables are nothing but the qualities or the properties of a every phenomena there are two types of variables one is the dependent variable and the independent variable these dependent and independent variables are uh, mainly used in the experimental studies and this what are the de uh, dependent variable the dependent variables are changing variables and they are affecting the things i took where i took the example i was taking an example of a health education or structured teaching program a video assisted teaching program or plant teaching program so those all are said to be a dependent variable because they are giving the effect because they are changing the the independent variable what are the independent variable they are not changing but they are the cause i was taken an example of a knowledge and practice the research variables what research variable similarly of the variables which are used in the experimental studies in the non experimental studies we are using the research variables then the extraneous variables what are extraneous variables which are affecting from the outside as i told you that when we are teaching we are uh, doing certain uh, uh, research and we are doing certain surveys and all that time what happens the people may uh, earn a yeah, gain their knowledge through some other means also maybe through the tv maybe through the newspaper maybe some other channels and all and because of that uh, thing their knowledge may be increased or yeah, they may there will be change in their 
practices also. So, those variables are known as extraneous variables. Then the population, what is population? Population is the set of the individuals with the common characteristics of the qualities. The one who are having the same qualities or same characteristics, those are called as the population. And from this population, what we are uh, taking? We are taking the target population. So, what is this target population in which the researcher is interested? Among this population, the researcher might be interested in certain things. So, he is taking that sample, uh, that uh, population only. So, those are known as a target population. Next, the word comes the accessible population. What are accessible population? Accessible population are those when the researcher has taken from the target population, among those target population, the population should meet the needs of the researcher. Again, uh, I told you an example of a where the people are knowing the whatever the population who, who uh, the researcher has took, whether they are having uh, the uh, literate people or what, then uh, whether are they uh, able to read, write English and all. So, these all are taken by the researcher, those all coming in the inclusion and who are not come, uh, not knowing all those things comes in the exclusion criteria. Then comes the sample. What is sample? Sample is nothing but a subset of the population. Among the whole population what we are taking? We are taking the sample. So, from where the sample is taken? The sample is taken again from the target population. So, what we are taking? We are taking a sample. It is a subset of the population that is known as a sample. Next comes the hypothesis. What is hypothesis? That is prediction of the relationship between two or more variables. We are uh, identifying whether two variables or two or more variables whether are they related or not. Related means how they are related and uh, which type of relation exists between them. That uh, statements which we are forming in our research, those are hypotheses. And this hypothesis and this accessible populations and assumption all are done before our study only. Before doing the study, this should be done. Then assumption, what are assumption? Assumption is nothing but the assumed by the researcher. What the res uh, researcher before going to the study, what he is assuming. Now, I am assuming that our my rural area population are having adequate knowledge, they are doing adequate practices, this is my assumption. So, before before I am going to my study, I am doing my assumptions. Then comes the reliability. So, what is the reliability? Reliability is nothing but it is a degree of the consistency of an instrument. A degree of the consistency of the instrument means when we are doing repeated studies, if we are getting the same results, then the, it is said to be a reliable one. Okay? So, when it is reliable in the sense what it is, we are getting the similar results only and that can be applied in the future also. So, this is a reliable. I took an example of a thermometer. When I check a temperature once, twice, thrice, if my temperature is coming same, then it that particular instrument, that particular thermometer is said to be a reliable. Okay. Next comes the validity. Validity is nothing but that particular instrument used for a specific purpose. I took an example of the thermometer. Thermometer for specific purpose only it is used. For what purpose it is used? To assess the fever. Similarly, BP apparatus for the uh, checking the BP and weighing machine for the assessing the weight. So, that particular instruments which they are using are known as uh, validity. Okay? Thank you. So, in we just now we have seen about the research, need of the nursing research and we saw about certain terminologies. Now, let us move on towards our types of the research. Okay. How the research has been classified? The research has been mainly classified into two types based on the approach and based on the purpose. Based on the approach and based on the purpose we are classifying the research. Based on the approach the research has been classified into quantitative research and qualitative research. Again, further classification of this one. This qualitative research has been further classified into experimental research and non-experimental research. These experimental research are further classified into true experimental research, quasi-experimental research and pre-experimental research. Similarly, the non-experimental research are been classified into descriptive research, exploratory research and correlational research. Based on the purpose, the research has been classified into the basic research and the applied research. We will see in detail about the qualitative research and the quantitative research, but before going to that, let us see what is this basic research and applied research and we will move on towards the qualitative research and the quantitative research. So, what is this basic research? As the name is saying that basic, basic means it is the base. 
okay here what we are doing we are uh, discovering to discover new or to discover the existing or to expand the knowledge regarding any phenomena any phenomena which is been occurring anything which is been changing whichever the whichever the thing the basic is there what it is happening we are studying it it might be a old knowledge or it might be a new knowledge we are doing here or we are studying here that is known as the basic research when this basic research whatever the thing we are getting when this we are applying here when the results of this have been applied here then we are calling it as applied research so what is this after generalizing the things the after generalizing the basic knowledge what we have find in the basic research we are applying this here and we are saying that one as a applied research and here after applying also we find the answers to the existing questions here we are finding the answers to the existing question why does it happen how does it happen whatever the phenomena is there so that was all about the basic research and the applied research and we here we will see in depth about uh, the qualitative research and the quantitative research so now coming to this quantitative research so what is quantitative research quantitative research it it is a how it the data is there the data is countable or a numerical data like 1 2 3 4 whatever so so here we can count the data and it is a numerical one and the in the qualitative what is it it is in a descriptive form where this it is a descriptive data when we speak about the sample size in the quantitative data it is a very large sample we have to take here large sample maybe some 100 more than 100 some like that we are taking a very large number of sample and in qualitative what we are doing we are taking a very small sample next uh, the findings here we can generalize the findings generalize the findings in the sense what we are doing here we can be uh, after doing our study for example now i have done on 50 samples or 100 samples similarly this study can be applied on 500 samples a thousand samples that we can say that here the we can find findings are generalized there we cannot generalize the findings why we cannot generalize the findings because here we are, there is a descriptive data and and very small sample size is there and there what we are doing in the descriptive data we are taking certain objects images yeah we are analyzing the, uh, analyzing the behavior of the people and all so because of that and it will be difficult to generalize our findings next comes the data collection the data collection here it is very easy why, why it is busy because we are using certain questionnaires or we are using certain tools and all and we are directly collecting a large amount of data in a uh, small span of time also we can uh, collect the data but it is very difficult to collect the data why it is difficult to collect the data because the study of the behavior is there and here what is there we are finding the we are we are finding the cause behind it so it will be difficult to collect the data in the uh, qualitative next the tools which types of tools we are using the qualitative data in the qualitative data we are using the structured all or semi structured structured means they are in hand only before only they have prepared then directly the prepared thing we are going and we are distributing to the sample size sample people and we are getting the answer from them and semi structured the, again the same only half uh, will be prepared and half will be are asking there only that is the semi structured but here what is it is unstructured unstructured or semi structured unstructured in the sense what is there now i am going to uh, going to a sample for example again now all, almost all we are uh, doing our uh, studies through online and all so i want to assess certain people certain things okay so i am directly asking the questions interview questions we can say i am asking one question you are giving the answer and based on that answer my next question will be there so those type of questionnaires are known as unstructured questionnaires next comes the analysis the analysis of this quantitative data is mainly done by descriptive or the inferential statistics using the data of the uh, descriptive and inferential statistics we are doing the analysis of the quantitative data and in case of the qualitative we are doing it by descriptive or by coding or indexing or by the narration so these are the main difference of the qualitative and quantitative data the types of the research research have been classified in the uh, two types mainly the um, based on the approach and based on the purpose based on the approach they are further classified into qualitative data and quantitative data in the quantitative data that the quantitative data it is counterable or numerical data only and the sample size is large findings can be generalized data collection is easy 
they are using the structured or semi structured questionnaire and even the analysis of the data is done through a descriptive and inferential statistics. This qualitative data has been further classified into experimental and non experimental. In the experimental, we are again further classifying it into true experimental, quasi experimental, and pre experimental study. And in the non experimental, it is a descriptive, explorative, and correlational. And regarding the qualitative data, it is a descriptive data. Here we are taking the object, image, and we are only an, uh, and are anal analyzed on those things. The sample size is very small, we cannot uh, generalize the findings because uh, we are uh, assessing the human beers and, and the sample size is also very less. The data collection is very easy here and the data collection is bit uh, difficult there because of the behavior of the humans. Next tool used is the structured and the semi structured, here we are already standardized structured uh, questionnaires or tools we are using. And there what is there based on the answers of that particular question, the next question will be arising. So, that is a unstructured questionnaire. And the analysis here descriptive and the inferential analysis is used and there for the analysis we are using the coding, indexing and narration. Thank you and we will meet in the next class. Thank you students.